You know, there are look, there are no Holy Ghost bikinis in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, we'll just skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> They're just turned off on me. Click. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth lived in England before World War II. He was illiterate. He couldn't even read. He was a plumber. His wife, Polly, got saved and became a preacher, and she was in the, uh, the back before they were completely backslidden, the uh, Salvation Army. And a very strong, evangelical, spirit-filled church in England back before the turn of the century. Well, long story made short, Smith Wigglesworth finally got saved. He was a coarse, hard, harsh, cussing, profane plumber. But when he got saved, his whole, he took on a new nature. He was born again, and he became very loving and very gentle, except with sin and demons. And there was so, many, so much sin and so many demons, people thought he was harsh. But he was a very gentle man. And when to learn how to read, he used the Bible. He never read a newspaper in his life, never read a magazine. He wouldn't even allow a newspaper in his house. Every 15, 5 to 15 minutes, he'd pull out a New Testament and be reading the Word. He never went longer than 20 minutes his entire con except when he was asleep. If he was awake, he never let, went more than 15 minutes without reading the Word of God. Constantly bathing, conscious, of, aware of God, His Word, and the things of God. He would, sit, he would sit out in public on a public bench. People would be walking by. All of a sudden, he'd just pull out the Bible, read something, and start crying and say, I love you, Jesus. You are the great God. I'm so grateful. And people would just stand there and stare at him. But that's how different he was from his generation. Are you getting this? Amen. This man walked so close to God, he got on the public train to go from London to some other, other town in England and he's just walking to get in his seat. And as he's walking by, people start crying and screaming and weeping. And a man gets up in the aisle, falls down on his knees in front of where Smith is sitting, and said, my God, man, you convict me of my sins. How can I get saved? And he didn't say a word to anybody. That's the move for this generation. Amen. 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 Because all of our ways of having church, ways of dressing, ways of singing, ways of ministry hasn't done a thing. Right. And if you don't believe it, wait for the shaking to come. And all what you think are converts are visitors. Amen. Because Amen. Yes. their hearts haven't changed. Right. Yeah. You'll stand according to the decision of your and the new nature of your heart, not how you blend in with the crowd. Amen. 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 Another time he's on a cruise, you know, with the go from. From England to America, you had to use a boat. They didn't have planes. You had the steamers, steamliners. And it took three weeks to go from England to the United States. And he's on a steamer heading for the United States to hold meetings in the U.S. And he's down there having dinner, and they have this band and everything, and the captain's sitting down at his special table, and the, the entertainers are up there, and he's eating dinner with his wife, and they're sitting there, and... People are coming up just like karaoke night now, but they didn't have karaoke. They are coming up and singing songs. And so finally, the entertainment director comes up to Smith Wiggles and says, Sir, we'd like for you to come up and sing. He goes, No, no, thank you. He goes, No, we'd like for you to come up and sing. We, we, we want you to participate. He goes, Under one condition. He goes, What's that? I can sing anything I want. Oh, absolutely. So he gets up on the platform, takes the microphone, and he says, Now all you people be quiet. He was very loud, boisterous man. Then this whole crew just shut down. He says, bow your heads. Now, Father, bless this song in Jesus' name. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Everybody in the crew started crying. And many people came up and got saved. That's a lifestyle in darkness. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the Spirit of God's saying today. Can you take over as if Jesus walked in the room? That's what we're called to right now.
life because this generation is so demonically bombarded, controlled, shaped, and trained. You'll never entertain them out of sin. Amen. You got to bring them Jesus, unveiled, unhindered, white, and anointed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's anointed, that's anointed, folks. That's revelation. Amen. What are we looking for, Father? Romans chapter 8. Very familiar scripture, but it'll take on a whole whole new uh, mindset. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and back up to Romans 8.1. Remember, church, this is by revelation. I, have, I wasn't even planning on teaching today. The Holy Spirit just started speaking to me. Amen? Amen. Amen? There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. There is no sentence of guilty. There's no condemning sentence. You are not guilty before the Lord. But watch. Remember what John said? I quoted it. That if our hearts condemn us, we can't pray right. But if our hearts do not condemn us, then we have faith and we know that whatsoever we pray, we will receive. But if your heart condemns you, you don't have the faith to believe you have effectual, fervent prayers. Amen. So why do I have to walk holy? So I can walk boldly. So that I can talk like Jesus, preach like Jesus, demonstrate Jesus without any inner condemnation of my heart. It's not God saying stop it. It's my heart saying, who do you think you are? Echoing the accusations of the world and Satan around me. Come on. Amen. That's good stuff. Amen. 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 There, is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Watch. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Tony and the Amplify, quickly. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, for thank that. You, thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank, thank you, Lord, for setting, setting me free. free. Amen. Now, did it just say you are free and without guilt in the eyes of God? Yes. Amen. So the guilt, the condemnation, the conviction of your heart is coming from somebody or circumstances, not from the kingdom of the, of the Lord. Right. So that means to stay free from that condemnation, guilt, oppression, and feeling like I'm sentenced before God, i got to walk in a different realm. It's called the realm of the flesh or the realm of the spirit. Amen. 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 Just as sure as light and dark do not harmonize, never will and cannot your flesh and your spirit war the world and the kingdom war. The two kingdoms cannot agree, will not agree, are never going to agree. Only one can rule. Amen. Go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has set you free from the law of sin and of death. So read, read verse 1 again, brother. Amen. Therefore there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Okay. The King James says that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who's got a new international version or an NIV? Sister Teresa, what's it say in yours? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Now, that, that's telling you right there, by revelation knowledge, get this. You can walk under two laws. The law of the spirit of life has set you free. The law of spirit of death keeps you in bondage and conviction. Amen. Those are kingdoms. Yeah. And each kingdom has its own set of governing laws. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now, we live in a generation where the kingdom of God and its laws are being forced to harmonize with the kingdom of the world and its laws. And that's why you have a weak, ineffectual church saying, where's the harvest? Where's this great outpouring of revival? 
Where's this great signs, wonders, and healing and miracles that we see in the Word for these last days? It's because we cannot live under two laws. Amen. You're free if you stay under the governing laws of the Spirit of Christ Jesus in the kingdom of God. The second you get out of that, you are... Listen, folks, that's why Satan loves this confusion over our border. If he can blend the laws, he controls everybody. Borders are a, a stable ex, uh, expression of you are now getting ready to cross over into a kingdom with whole different laws. So we got this going right on by Babylon and said, tear down the walls. We don't care about the laws. Everything's the same. And it's to their destruction. And that's why America is going to be destroyed. Yes. You've got to get past what you've seen in the natural and walk under the kingdom revelation of the guidelines and laws that, that govern God. Amen. 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 And they're as different as light and dark. Amen. Now listen to this. You take TC, put him on the south side of the border, say, welcome to Mexico. I have nothing against, against Hispanic people. But you drop me off in Tijuana and say, welcome, boy, this is, your, your, this is where you're going to live. Huh? Why? There's nothing about this place I know. I can't read the street signs. I can't read the newspaper." I gotta ask people, how do I get to the restroom? What's the restroom? Uh, uh, what's the word for? And I'm completely out of my element. Why? They're humans. I'm human. They drive cars. I drive cars. What's the difference? The laws have created different cultures. And if I don't speak the language and can't understand the written word, I am completely out of the element. Amen. If you can't read the word and get in his language. You'll never flow with his element that sets you free from this element. It's not a matter of just being saved. you got to walk in a whole new kingdom. Come on. And that kingdom is saying it is absolutely mandatory that you understand and get the anointing to comprehend who you are and what you live for now. Amen. 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 We've been living under different governing laws wondering where's the power. Where's the kingdom? Where's the glory? Where's God? God's saying, get back on the right side of the border. Keep your mind anointed, and that'll keep your garments white, and you'll start seeing correctly. Amen. Hallelujah. So how, how do I stay free? Living in the right kingdom. The kingdom of God. Watch it again. Look at verse 2. For the law of the Spirit, say... Spirit kingdom. Spirit, spirit kingdom. kingdom. The spirit, the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life. We're talking about ruling, governing laws. Amen. The law of the kingdom of life and light. Put it that way. So you can better understand you are the light of the world. The laws of the spirit of life and light in Christ Jesus has made me free from the laws of the world and the spirit of death. Of sin and death. You got two governments, two laws, one's free and one's bondage. So when I walk in the spirit and the kingdom and the ruling laws of God, I'm automatically free from sin, sickness, disease, and death. Amen. You get sick because you've entered into the wrong laws. Amen. Amen. What was I before I went over the border? American. What's required to function over the border? Mexican. Right. That's not insulting. That's just a fact. Yeah. Let's say you drop me off in the middle of Vietnam. Forget it. Useless. Can't flow, can't even get on a bus. But it can function perfect in the United States. The problem is, I'm out of my element trying to act, think I can live in an element I wasn't supposed to be living in. Amen. That's why Christians suffer sickness, oppression, affliction, diseases, 
bondages and fears. You're trying to co cohabitate in the wrong governing laws. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why in my house, I literally, when I got up today, and just so everybody knows, I, I was woken up with, also I had this massive hip problem. Never had a hip problem in 65 years. Couldn't sleep, roll over, couldn't sleep, roll over, couldn't sleep. So I said, well, I may be slow, but I'm not that stupid. I got up, grabbed my Bible, put on my shorts, put on my T-shirt, closed the door quietly so I wouldn't wake up the handmaiden. And I went in the kitchen. I said, this garbage stops now. And I went to work in the kitchen. I said, you are not, it's illegal for you to be in my house. It's illegal for you to be in my body. It's against the law for you to be here. Get now. And whoever it is that's being afflicted other than me, if this is a sympathetic feeling the infirmities of another, I rebuke your work in their body in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was Daryl that woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I found out when I got to church. He had hurt himself, and he was hurting in his back and his hips. And I couldn't sleep, and God said, wake up. Somebody's, the, the, the wrong government's trying to inflict laws over his body. And you have to enforce the laws of God over that. you got to turn the light on. Amen. Amen. Do you understand the deceptiveness of political correctness? Amen. It's trying to get you to dress, act, walk, and talk a language and a culture you're not called to. Amen. And it won't work. Hallelujah. 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 You learning anything? Amen. 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 For the law of sin and death, I've been set free. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak. Say the law, this natural law. This natural, natural, natural law. The laws of this world. The laws of this world. Guess yeah. what? You'll never go to a fortune teller again. You'll never go to Madame Zumazum and have your palm read. You'll never get in a bus and, and fly to Tibet. You'll never go seek some so-called hidden knowledge and power of this world Amen. ever again if you get your head anointed with the mind of Christ and get your get your consciousness in the spirit of God because the law of this world <laughs> system is weak. Yes. Amen. Well, I used to be a Christian, but I'm a Buddhist now. You became weak. Come on. Amen. All the laws of this world system are weak. The strong laws are the laws of the kingdom of God. Amen. Now the mystery is this. Why does the kingdom of God look so meek and weak? Because it puts on humility. But inside, it's the greatest power of the universe. Jesus stripped himself of his majesty and appeared weak to walk among us to give us the unlimited power of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And anything outside the kingdom of God, the word of God, and Jesus Christ is a weak law. Amen. You've got the power over it. And Satan tricks people into pursuing Islam and, and Chrislam and Hinduism and Buddhism, thinking there's some hidden mystery that will make me more spiritually powerful. You've been lied to. Yes. Amen. Amen. You just Amen. got soiled in your garments of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now watch this, verse 4. Uh, or for, finishing up verse 3. It's weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, that humility, looking to be sinful and weak when he wasn't, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. What, what, what should your fleshly conduct be like right now? Meek, but not certainly not weak. Meek and holy, without spot or wrinkle. Amen? Amen. Amen. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What's the call? Church, you have got to walk as spirit people in the spirit of the kingdom of God and stop harmonizing with the world. Just Amen. get it out of your vocabulary. Get it out of your concern. Get it out of your Amen. mindset. You've been Amen. trained by Babylon. 
You've let the heathens dictate to you. Remember we covered last week the spirit of Aaron? The people telling you how to have church, how to be a Christian? You have let this world system tell you, well, this is the Christianity we'll let influence us. Well, where did that sick compromise come from? Bondage. Take your power off, be weak like me, and we'll act like we respect you. Meanwhile, the real seekers can't find nobody to go to. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Remember I said a whole new mindset's coming out of the body of Christ. If we are be hungry and find the heart of God for this last move of God, you know what it is? Become spirit kingdom people. And the mind of this flesh realm and the things of the earth are going to start growing strangely dim to you. You're not going to care about the things you used to. You're not going to care about losing friends. You're not going to care about your next uh, promotion. You're not going to care about new clothes, new cars, new houses, new boats. Because one, having my mind anointed, I already know what my Lord and Savior said. Seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, the right way that it works. All that stuff's going to be added unto you. I never have to address it again. Come on. What should I have a mind toward? The kingdom of God, how it flows, how it operates, and being in obedience to its laws. Amen. Holiness, but we don't like to say that word. Glory to God. Glory to God. For they that are after the flesh, their minds are preoccupied with what? Yeah. That wasn't a trick. What's it say? They mind the things of the flesh. Amen. Their minds are after the fleshly things. So you talk to a Christian, it's all about where they're going to party, where, what movie they're going to go to, where they ate dinner, where, where they're looking for it. You talk to most Christians, and unless you're five minutes out of church, nothing spiritual comes out of their mouth. Why? Because they're under the ruling laws of the government of the flesh. And when the flesh says it's flu season, the first ones in the lines to get the shot will be Christians. Using the world system as quoting, I have to have wisdom. Right. But that wisdom is earthly and devilish. Amen. Are you getting that? Amen. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. God. Verse 6. Oh, back up. They mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, what? The things of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. How many of you have known Pastor T.C. more than two or three years? Amen. Amen. How many of you know me more personally than just the pastor position? It's, it's very uncommon for you to be around me very long that the conversation doesn't get turned around to God. Amen. Amen. Why? Because that's my mindset. That's where I've set my mind. Amen. And what I set your what you set your mind on, your conversation, your mentality, your focus, everything follows that. Amen. 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 Well, brother, you got to be normal during the week. That's for Sundays. Well, you, you had a Babylonian preacher teach you that right. Amen. so that the world can control you. And yes. you stay under the laws of sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. And it really is it, two different planets. You talk faith talk to carnal Christians, they look at you like you're from Mars. Yeah. What do you mean flu never comes on your body? I've had, pre I've had Christians say, well, God gave you a brain to go to the doctor. No, God gave me a brain to have the mind of Christ, not flee to the doctor first. Amen. Amen. Now, if you have to go to the doctor, make a second or third. Always go to God first. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded, to set your mind on earthly, fleshly things is what? 
Notice I didn't write that. You just read it in print yourself. Amen? Amen. For to be carnally minded will bring you into the bondage of sickness, disease, and death. Because the wisdom of this world is geared to kill you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How many depressed Christians do you know? That just told you where their mind's at. They're focusing on the problem, which is from the earth, and not the already answered solution, which is from heaven. You have no idea how much out of this world system we got to get to be the end time harvest body of Christ. Amen. And it's going to take a revelation move of God to do it, just like God had to pour out revelation for the healing revival. He had to pour out revelation for the charismatic revival. He had to pour out the revelation for the Pentecostal revival. He had to pour out revelation for the word of faith revival. He had to pour out, he had to move on the church. They had to be hungry enough to take it and carry it through the world for it to affect the world. And God is on the verge of moving with a manifestation of the mind of Christ, the holy highness of God, in the complete separate lifestyle mentality of the body of Christ, and the hungry ones will grab it and take Jesus to the world. Amen. And it's going to be a very quick work so we don't organize it and screw it up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, verse 7, and then we're going to go over to Corinthians real quick. Because the carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. For it is not, listen, what's the carnal mind? The natural reasoning process of, of normal thinking. What, the, what people will tell you, well, that's normal. It's normal. You're supposed to go get a flu shot. It's normal. You're supposed to get your child injected with 50 different vaccinations before he goes to preschool for, so the poor thing is suffering from ADHD and every other manner of psychological and emotional problems before he ever gets to first grade. Right. Amen. That's, right. That's normal. That's earthly wisdom. Amen. Now watch this. Because the normal, natural, carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not, it is not, it is not subject to the what? Law. The law of God. The governing laws of the kingdom of God. And in fact, neither indeed can it be. It's impossible. It's impossible for a carnal Christian to fall in the kingdom of God. Amen. I didn't make that up. I just read that to you. Amen. And it's impossible for a spiritual kingdom flowing Christian with the mind of Christ to harmonize with the kingdom of the laws of, of the flesh. Amen. Amen. Now let's just think about it again. You have to be relevant. What did that just say? That just violated everything you just heard out of the Holy Word of God. It will keep you absolutely separated from God's greater glory. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Are you getting this? Amen. Amen. So there's two realms you're going to live in. What are they? The fleshly realm or the spiritual realm? There's two kingdoms you're going to live in. What are they? The kingdom of the world or the kingdom of our God. There's two governing laws that you're going to live in, or you can live in. What are they? The laws of the flesh or the laws of the spirit. Now, what did it just say up here? The mind of the flesh is actively hostile to God. That's the Amplified, verse 6. Say it again. Read the whole, whole verse again, Pastor Tony. 6 and 6. Yes. Now, the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it proceeds. Mental sin. reasoning is death. The mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God now and forever. The mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to God. The mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits, it listen, is relevant to the things, no. Is seeking the things of, no. 
It's hostile to the things of God. Amen. It does not submit itself to God's law, since it cannot. It does not submit to the laws of God because it cannot submit to the laws of God. Now, size that up, shape that up, and balance that out with relevance. It's an impossibility. Amen. What's the greatest influence of the church of this generation? Be relevant. And it is absolutely hellish and demonic to keep you out of the last day glorious call of God that the whole earth will be covered with the glory of our Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now look over here with me at Corinthians. My, 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 my. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for understanding. Thank, thank you, Jesus, you. for understanding. Now you understand how come this old psycho pastor prophet of yours gets so wide-eyed and, and spitting cotton over carnal churches. It's because it's geared to kill an entire generation and at least keep you warring against a God that's trying to say, flow with me. Come on. And it's right here in the Holy Word if we would just stop looking in the Word for blessings and start looking in the Word for His ways. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Have you found Corinthians? Yes. Look at 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1, and we're going to start with My God, I, I can't read all that. I'll keep you here all night. But, which would be fine with me. <laughs> it wouldn't bother me one bit. But I can only take you as far as you, as, uh, you have dominance over the flesh. Amen. I love that woman. That's why she's always promoted by God. Glory. Amen. That's what have you noticed that every time you get promoted by guys because you're, you're for a few weeks before that, your, your heart's saying, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, whatever, Lord. I want you, God. I want you, God. And then God responds with a promotion and an increase. It never just happens. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. Let's start, because I had any notes and I didn't prepare any of this. Let's start roughly at chapter 1, verse 16. And I baptize you all, all I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. The reason he's clarifying this is because people were getting all arrogant over who they were following. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of I'm of this and that. And Paul said, I thank God I didn't get involved with none of your, your self-exaltated division and, and uh, preferred preacher nonsense. Amen. Amen? He said, I baptized this brother, but other than that, out of that bunch over there arguing, I don't think I baptized any of them, and I didn't, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. For Christ sent me, verse 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not Now, here we go, bam, right into the middle of this. Not with the wisdom, with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. What do you think is happening in churches over and over and over and over again in the in the United States where you go in and cannot find a cross anywhere in the church? That right there is our symbol of victory. That right there is what identifies us as citizens of the kingdom of God. That right there is identifies everything that our heart is supposed to love and be affectionate for. And if you strip it down, you're stripping your identity. Amen. 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 What's the spirit of doing away with our southern border? Borders define the identity of the nation you're going to. You go that way, well, we're just getting ready to go into Mexico. They speak Spanish different language. We're getting ready to go into America. They speak English. Different laws, 
different language. We're in the world. They speak worldly. Different laws, different standards, different language. We're of the kingdom of God. We're getting ready to enter into different laws, different language. Amen. So to talk like them, act like them, operate like them, makes you live like them when you're not called to it. You're called to a whole different world system. Amen. Amen. You're not supposed to be remotely the same. Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Well, we take the cross down. This is worldly governing laws, worldly wisdom, worldly language. We took the cross down not to offend. When the point of the cross is to let them know you're still going to hell if it offends you. Amen. It is a thermometer that tells you whether you're saved or not. If you don't look at that and say, thank you, Jesus, I love the cross, you're not even saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that wisdom was meant for the laws of sin and death. death. And to disguise it so you never know you're still dead. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, but you've got to have an anointed mind to read this and see, wow, how trained by hell have we become. And if we're trained by hell, how are we going to reach those bound by hell? Amen. Take up your cross. Everybody should have one to show the world. Amen. And follow me. Hallelujah. Not take them out of church. Invest in a new one. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have we been trained by the world or not? Yes. Not this church, but the corporate body. Right. So answer me, church. Have, yes. have we? Yes. Oh, my gosh. For the preaching of the cross is of them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy, not relate to him, not be relevant to him, not make sense to him. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the so-called prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world system? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now, why are you trying to relate to foolishness? You got to get your mind anointed. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to have an anointed mind to understand how, just how deceived we've been and how to get into where we're supposed to get, which will cause you to walk in a way that you stop getting spotted and blemished. I wish I had a church of a thousand women sitting in here. You know why? Because women are ordained to be the, the... You know what the womb is all about? Do you know what your womb is all about? I know men are after it. That's, that's the whole problem. Do you know what your womb is all about? Are we still on? Yes, we're still on. What is your womb for, ladies? If it's... Why would a man have to answer this question for you? Somebody raise your hand like you know what it's for. <laughs> Teresa? It's to protect the seed from death. It's a cocoon, an atmosphere where life grows. It comes to full fruition. The greatest anointing, the, the, the greatest ministry that could possibly be is for the divine seed to come down and never be aborted. So women have this glorious call of God 
that when God wants to birth something, he trusts you to protect it, shelter it, and bring it to absolute fruition to the, there it is. All, all men are as lunch buckets. We just walk around with a with a, a box of tools saying, okay, let's get married and give you a seed. Other than that, all the glory is what takes place with the woman and her ability to protect, guard, and keep unblemished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's another definition of holiness. The thing that God has started, protect it, guard it, don't let nothing touch it. It'll abort it. Come on. You can't live in both worlds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where was I? Twenty. Thank you. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made them foolish? Hasn't He made foolish the wisdom of the world? So if you're trying to relate to worldly wisdom, you're trying to you're trying to make sense of foolishness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Pastor Tony. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by its wisdom knew not God. So that's telling you right there that the wisdom of the world, and all the time he's trying to sit down and relate and talk to and let. Let them, because everybody's got wisdom. No, they don't. After that, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the world, listen, let me say that again. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. You'll never know God until you get into the wisdom of the spirit realm. That's why being saved, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, walking, none of that makes sense until you're not just saved, but baptized with the Holy Ghost so that you have a higher understanding. Amen. Because some of the greatest warriors against God's goodness are carnal Christians fighting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They'll tell you sickness is normal, go to a doctor, stop babbling in tongues, that's of the devil. And they fight everything about the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For after that the wisdom of God, the wisdom of this world, knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So here we go. The move of this generation is this. They're all bound up in their wisdom. The church is bowing to their wisdom, trying to be relevant to darkness and make them like us. But in the wisdom of the world, it's only the wisdom of the foolishness of preaching Jesus Christ that will save that foolish world. Amen. Amen. Not being like them. Not making sense to them. Not being wise in their eyes actually being foolish in their eyes, but they see in the light that you are. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Salvation will come to them when they see a difference in you not making sense to them. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Meanwhile, most of the body of Christ tries to do what? Well, I need to go to class so I can make sense when I witness. I, I, I need to study this so I can relate to them at their level. Uh, I, I, I need to do this. And it's all studying to be like Babylon. And Babylon's wisdom is saying, well, you're just like us. Why should I change? That's right. Well, you just come and say, you know what? I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And if I lay hands on you, you'll be healed. And they go, really? Yeah, I'll be healed. And Jesus, wow, I don't have any more pain. We got a brother named Terry that lives in Australia that does that every day at work. Amen. 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 And he never tries to be their level of wisdom, never tries to relate to them. He just foolishly tells them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people get healed, set free, saved, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Being a fool. Right. 
but walking in the identity of a holy son of God in the kingdom manifestation of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's the call for this generation. Becoming fools that by being foolish in the wisdom of God, we might save some that think they're wise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's just skip down very very quickly. Verse 25, But the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So why would you seek anything other than the wisdom of God? Why would you read any other book other than the wisdom of God? Why would you go to any other culture other than the culture of the kingdom of God? Why would you look, taste, try out anything other than the ways of God? Amen. Because you don't believe this. It would be a fool to live that way, wouldn't it? But how many of our brethren do? Can I hear an amen, Pastor? Amen. 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 Can I hear an amen, Pastor? Amen. 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 Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. So what strength do I need? Just God's strength. What wisdom do I need? God. Just God's wisdom. Amen. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after what the world calls wise, not many mighty men after what the world calls mighty, are called. God's not looking for the wisdom of the world or the mind of the world. He wants foolish people that will surrender to him and he'll be strong and wise through them. Amen. 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 But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise of this world. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to change and confound the things which are